Howdy, everyone. Eric Allard here, Senior Vice President of Tilson Homes, part of the fourth generation of the Tilson family, coming to you on Tilson Live. It is Tuesday with the brains of the operation, ladies and gentlemen, the great, the wonderful, the marvelous Mrs. Dawn Dantzler, Vice President of Marketing and Customer Experience for Tilson Homes. Welcome, Dawn. Everybody, everybody say welcome, Dawn. We're so hey, Eric. Howdy. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I am doing uh, way better than I deserve. In fact, if I okay. do any better, there'd be two of me. That's how well I'm doing. If there were well, any that's better, great. There'd be two of me. And nobody needs that. So we don't <laughs> want to be doing any better than we are now. All is well. Uh, but what we do want is for you folks to put in the chat where you are watching from, where you are building, what part of the process that you're in. We are here to talk about all things building a custom home on your land. Obviously, we are with Tilson Homes. Mm -hmm. We build predominantly, actually exclusively, in the state of Texas. And... But we have found that we have people not only all over the nation, Don, all over the world that apparently mm -hmm. we're helping through this process. But we are going to be focused primarily on Texas because where else in the world is there anyway? There is only Texas. So we <laughs> build in Texas. We build homes on your land. We've been doing it for nearly 90 years. Um, if we survive this holiday season, we will be entering into and celebrating our 90th anniversary. So anyway, we Guys, want you there's all not to jump really in. a po possibility that we're not going to survive the, the, the holiday. Well, right? No, no. As a company, yeah. of course. I'm just talking as about company. like personally, will we make it through? And let's be What's honest. What's 2022 going to look like? What does 2022 <laughs> hold in store for us? That's really what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Tilson, Tilson making it into there is the least of my concerns. Trust me. Yes. Um, but anyway, no. We really uh, want you guys to get the most out of this. We have a really spectacular tour for you today. You're going to get lots of fantastic ideas. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you're already under construction, please turn this off, go somewhere else. There's not going to be <laughs> nothing here you need to see. <laughs> no, you're going to get uh, Dawn and her team did a fabulous job um, on this particular tour. And I really, really appreciate the Alfaro family for sharing this, letting us share this with, um, mm -hmm. with our, our little world here. So, but we want everybody to hear what they need to hear. So what else going All on? Right. What, are we, what are we talking about? Who, who's here? Has anyone joined us? Are we just having a conversation between the two of us? No, okay we that. have, we have, we have friends. Uh, Wesley <laughs> is here saying howdy. What's up, Wesley? Uh, we've got Linda. She's coming in from Colorado Springs. Very nice. We got Carolyn from College Station. Ah, uh, God's country. Such a pretty city. Pretty, pretty city. Beautiful Deirdre people. says hey. <laughs> Hello, Deirdre. Um, Carolyn is actually also doing a San Jacinto, so she's All excited right. to watch this one. This will be a good one to see. Yeah, we've got David from Benicia, California. All right, David. Is that international? Does that count still as United States? They're still part of the United States. Well. <laughs> so far. They haven't broken right. off just yet. Uh, Linda is going to be building near Alvord. Okay. Um, we have Jesse, currently in Williamson County, building in Gillespie. Brilliant. Um, and West. Wesley, he's he's watching from Phoenix, Arizona, building, building in Greenville. Greenville. And framing starting today. That's All awesome. right. Some activity, man. Yeah. Um, Jesse's sharing. She finalized floor plans, and our drafting team has put it all together better than she imagined. That's awesome. Aww, thanks that's for letting great. us know. Jesse, thanks for sharing that. Um, let's see. Martina is going to have her pre-con meeting on the 28th of this month. Merry Christmas. Yay. All right. I'm so excited well, to get to the stage. It's all go. Awesome. We got Donna coming in from Plano, counting down the days till we move to Marble Falls, and we'll start the process in the coming year. Awesome. Very cool. <laughs> Julie says she smells change orders. No change orders. <laughs> it's coming. Uh, Wesley is building the canyon Elevation C with the vaulted living and back porch. Oh, nice. Beautiful. Uh, Deirdre is building in Conroe. I'm hoping to start building soon. Very nice. We got Chris saying hi. Hey, Chris. Um, got Rachel. Hey guys, I hope y'all enjoy our home. So thank yes, you for so letting us share it. it. Uh, David says that Benicia is by Napa. So oh, we'll, well, well, then it's, Napa's uh, good. It's Napa's place. good. It's actually one of the few places I've been in California and it's pretty fantastic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll accept that. Uh, Armin contract signed the other day in Madison County. Congratulations. We've got Nick um, here in El Campo. We built the oh, San yeah. Jacinto a couple years ago. It's a perfect yeah. home for raising a family. Yeah, That's the Coopers a great go plan. way back with Tilson. They've been here. They've been around in the family a while. Welcome nice. back, Nick. And um, we've got Kimberly in San Antonio. Very cool. Uh, we got Joe back with us as always, looking for new info. Hey, Joe Barry, welcome back. Man, I've been missing you. 
Yeah, we got Jackie who's building a San Jacinto B in Magnolia. Jackie, I was at your house earlier today. I mean, oh, really? I was out there. Yep, sure was. Pretty place. Awesome. Very pretty place. And we have Amber building the Angelina C in Hamilton County soon. Very cool. And then we got Jesse wants to get together with Wesley and compare plans. There we go. <laughs> There we go. There we go. So yeah, lots of folks. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. We know you're going to get a lot out of this. Um, I've already gotten to see the video, which is pretty awesome. Um, so I, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about this one. So tell me a little bit about what we're doing, because it is something very, very unique. They had a particular plan they wanted. And we have a mm -hmm. lot of people ask this. They say, well, yes. I really like the outside of this house, but I don't need 4,000 square feet. So mm -hmm. what are my options here? Yeah, so this is, they liked the layout of the San Jacinto and the size of the San Jacinto, but like you were saying, they, they had a different exterior in mind, so they were in love with the Breckenridge, so I have affectionately dubbed this home what happens when the Breckenridge and the San Jacinto have a baby, you get this house, um, and it just came out absolutely beautiful, so very, very excited to show that, um, so I will go ahead and launch the first video, Okay. so y'all can see. Hello, my name is Jerry Shorten. I work with Dilson Homes, and this is Tucker. Most important, I'm Kelsey. <laughs> I'm also with Tilson. I'm on the marketing team, and we are here with Jerry's customer, Rachel, to tell us a little bit about her customized San Jacinto D here in Liberty County. So let's start with the most obvious. The exterior does not look like a San Jacinto. It's not. Walking up here, you would think it's the Breckenridge, but we love the outside of the Breckenridge but we love the San Jacinto floor plan. So we replicated the Breckenridge on our San Jacinto home. Yeah, that's awesome. You just kind of took the exterior off we of did. it and slapped it on your floor plan. We did. So like tell, me, tell me a little bit about what comes with the Breckenridge exterior. We have the 10 by 10 beams on the front of the house. Mm -hmm. Also, if you look around the windows and on the San Jacinto, it was just straight across uh, limestone. We're you see, we kind of stair-stepped and framed the- Yeah, it's very welcoming. Well, I'm excited to see the inside of the house. Can Let's we go, go check take it a out? look. All right. right. Windows yeah. to add a, a little bit extra touch to it. Yeah, that looks great. And the stone is Blanco Chop, I believe. It is. Mm -hmm. And I think standard on the Breckenridge is Sunflower, but we want a little bit more wider rock. Yeah, and I think it really complements the darker siding color that you chose. Right. And then you have the three the dormers. three dormers up top and if you look the one in the middle is actually a little bit bigger it kind of breaks them up and we like the look of adding a little bit extra to that middle dormer yeah so what's your favorite part about this exterior it would have to be that front porch there's just so much room for decoration seating just enjoy and be able to enjoy the outside of your home all right uh, yeah, I, I mean, looking at it, it is so. So the probably most clicked on plan on the website is the Breckenridge, right? Um, because and it's because of the exterior. We all know that. Like it's it's beautiful, it's stunning, it's tall, it's got front porch, it's got the craftsman look, it's got the dormers, it's got the stone, it's got the board and bat vertical. So so I mean, there's a lot that that it offers, and so it's mm -hmm. not at all strange that someone said, "Love it, gotta have that." don't need 4,000 square feet. <laughs> right, so, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and the fact that we were able to accommodate that in the San Jacinto is, is um, really, really impressive, so. Yeah. Um, so let's kind of take a look if you want to, yeah. So this is the the normal exterior of the San Jacinto D, um, which is also the model in spring. Um, so that kind of shows you what it would usually look like. So you've still got, you've still got that big front porch, but you don't have the dormers um, like you would have on the Breckenridge. Um, so what they did is just went in like like we were showing in the video and just kind of changed it up, which the next slide actually shows those changes um, that they made. So up in the corner, that is the elevation for the Breckenridge C, which is what they were what they were basing on, um, basing the, their the air exterior on. So we went ahead and you know did the stair stepping in the stone, um, you know put in the board and bat, and just kind of bring that character and and the main change is those top dormers. Um, yeah, yeah and so what's what's interesting is the San Jacinto model used to have three dormers on it. It did, uh, when yeah. It was originally built, yep, yep. Um, 
way back in the day before in, the internet and Facebook and all that. Um, yeah, when the whole outside, it was all brick too, wasn't it? It was all brick. It had three dormers, had circle top windows, all kinds of fun stuff. But yeah, so the, the uh, it, and because it's such a symmetrical home, it was very, very easy to do it without having the garage on it like the Breckenridge does. So mm -hmm. uh, Jerry was able to accommodate um, the, the family's request to have it. Hey, let's, you can center that dormer real easily. makes perfect sense over the door. Center the other two over those windows. Yep. And then, yeah, it's there. It just kind of terraces on down and really lends itself to do that, which is cool. Yeah, it's very cool. And um, some of the other stuff they did, you know, she mentioned that they made the front post a little bit wider. They went the 10 by 10s instead of the 8 by 8s. Um, and then they also will show you when we get inside, they made a change to the kitchen. And to do that, they needed an extra foot um, in the kitchen. And since the San Jacinto is a, you know, symmetrical plan, we also had to add a foot to the other side of the house to make it all still look even to consider something to consider so there's their home mm -hmm. um and again yeah if you were to put the Breckenridge right beside it I mean you're not going to notice much of a difference at all yeah other than all you're losing is that little extra garage section mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but yeah it's absolutely beautiful which you theoretically obviously could do on this home, but we're going to see here in a little bit, as you can see off to the left, they didn't need a garage. They're good to go on. Uh, yeah, they're they're good to go on the garage space. <laughs> storage space. Yeah, absolutely. So very, very cool. You want to take us through some of the colors? Yeah. So they went with, as she mentioned, the Blanco chop um, for, for the stone. Um, and then the siding is the virtual taupe. Uh, the trim is accessible beige. Um, and then that wood stain that you see there is the river wood stain. And then those shingles are that driftwood kind of grayish color. Very, very gorgeous home. Yeah. Turned out gorgeous. And this is just kind of showing you the rear. So they've got that, the side porch, you know, coming in from the driveway. And then they also have a nice big rear covered porch uh, because they did, they did do the option with the drop zone to add in that, that porch, which we'll show you on the inside. Yeah, so that, that's why this porch looks a little bit smaller than what's on the model home because yeah, mm -hmm. they, they've got a big drop zone here. Of course, this is the the breakfast kind of dining area off there, and yeah, this this shot is taken from where their their shop, their metal building, is. So yeah, right in and out um, into that mudroom kind of drop zone space. So, great idea. Yep. But we're uh, going ahead. Yeah. All right, so I'll show you in a second. But what this is the what what they kind of did with the foyer. It's going to be a little bit different than what you're what you're seeing in the in the model. Yes, and we've done the format a little bit different on this one, guys, and that because there were so many changes that that were made to this plan. We usually kind of go around the horn and go through the changes, but when Dawn did that, she realized it was going to be it was way a overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we did a we're we're putting a few in each one. So. Bear with us, but definitely do ask your questions. We will stop mm -hmm. uh, and answer questions periodically through. Put all your questions in the chat about this design, any design customizations in particular, building on your land, utilities, financing, whatever you think you need to know, we want to give it to you. So yeah. uh, ask all those questions, and Don's going to take us to the next part of the video. All righty. Let's go. Come on in, guys. Thank you. Wow. wow. This looks amazing. Thank you. We really love it. I can't get over the ceiling height. It feels like there's so much space. Actually, you know, this is actually a standard option too as well with this house. Yeah, that, that high ceiling, that's yep. awesome. Absolutely. So Rachel, tell us about what we did differently in this room. We added the double molding around the top. Nice. Um, and we kept the door, which was standard. And then if you notice when you walk in, in the original San Jacinto, you would walk into the dining room here, but this wall is closed off because we did a playroom on this side of the wall. Mm -hmm. So you just walk in and then you walk into the living room. Well, wow. that's an awesome customization. We don't see that done a lot. And that really just shows that you can kind of make this plan fit your family, whatever your family's needs are. So that's a super cool customization. I'm excited to see that Correct. Later. And we love that option because who wants to walk in and see a playroom? Yeah. <laughs> All Absolutely. open. Correct. Absolutely. Just toys everywhere. Correct. That would be a, a nightmare <laughs> trying to keep that clean. Absolutely. But then in here, I see that you kind of kept everything pretty much standard to the plan with the box yeah. beams and the huge windows. Yes, we did. We That was our main feature of the St. Jacinto that we loved was having the cedar beam. Mm -hmm. That was every time we went to a house, we we're like, man, we love those beams. Mm -hmm. And then the windows are standard, the big windows. We love all the lighting that brings in. 
and then yeah those are massive windows the natural light that they let in is just incredible but also too i see that you have these nice vinyl floors in here Tell yeah. us a little bit about and that. and we love them they are super sturdy we have three boys that run around in here and you wouldn't be able to know they're <laughs> awesome they hide all the scuffs they do it's, they're, they're great and they're wonderful and then you also have the wider option for the trim we did we went with the five inch baseboard yeah. along the bottom which was an upgrade i like that though it really just kind of elevates the floor space yes, especially with these high ceilings you don't need a shorter trim a to make one. the walls seem higher right so Absolutely. it really looks nice uh let, let's go in the kitchen let's check this out So yeah, we got um, Jerry and Kelsey there uh, with the customer. They always do a great job. Appreciate y'all mm -hmm. sharing that. But uh, tell us about in the four year what changed? Because yeah, I'm I've, I've been coming to this model like most of my career, and this is this is a little different. So what's going on? Yeah. So in the four year, usually when you when you come into the San Jacinto, the standard plan would be that this right where this wall is is actually your dining room. Uh, but they made a change in this that they wanted to create like a multimedia slash playroom um, in there. So they used one of our custom options and changed it up, which we'll, we'll just talk a little more about when we get to that actual room. But part of the changes that they made is they filled in um, that wall. So there's no entry into there because there's going to in the future be a TV um, on that wall. So they've closed off what would have been the dining room, um, both on this side. And there would have also been an entrance from the kitchen side that they also, um, walled off and which gave them in, in that room, even more cabinet space. But that's kind of the biggest change here is usually it's, it's open, um, into the dining room, but you're coming into a foyer, um, that's a little closed off instead, but with the big tall ceilings, it feels very roomy and it's great, great change. Yep, and a beautiful front door on this house. Like I love the mm -hmm. the iron that comes on it, and and uh, those are actually windows on either side, which kind of makes it nice. You don't have to worry about any upkeep on the side lights or things like that right. later on down the road. Yeah, and it's it's great. That's one of the you know big thing. It's about the San Jacinto plan. That's standard. Uh, that front door is included um, on that plan, so it's a really nice nice touch. And then the family room, um, also beautiful. The only, you know, the upgrades that they made in here and changes is, you know, that we did talk about the LVP flooring. Um, yep. You know, that is, you know, normally you'd have carpet in this area would be the, the included option. Uh, but those cedar beams, the wood beams on the top are included um, with the plan. Um, and then they did also, as we mentioned, upgrade the um, baseboards to make those a little bit taller. But everything yeah. else that you see in here is, is how the plan would come. And there are a couple of different options on the on the baseboard and the casings. Of course, they went with mm -hmm. kind of this, this more colonial um, five five and a quarter inch, I think it is base. We also have a, a little more craftsman style one by six base with one by four casing. So yeah. it's kind of whatever your your preference is. We can accommodate that. So just ask your consultant, and we can walk you through all that. So yeah, the the ceiling fan you see, you know, the the recess lights that you see, the LEDs, that's all going to be included. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. I think we do have a couple questions. Let me circle in. Well, let's uh, circle in there. Yeah, we need Give to. Give the people what they want, Mrs. Dancer. Well, we need to acknowledge Wesley because he actually rescheduled his vacation to make sure that he was available on Tuesdays. So that's, thank wow. you so much. That I, that's the biggest compliment I've gotten today. That's amazing. Especially since think? like he was going to Hawaii. Like. I know. Right? I know. I will say I have taken my mic overseas you have yeah i did a live <laughs> on vacation because y'all matter to us too mr bass yes. it's that big a deal awesome and then we have janet uh joining us she's building a live oak in grayson county very cool awesome. um and wesley is open to comparing plants with jesse so they're gonna get together good glad we got that settled i was concerned um wesley did say that four thousand square feet would be awesome uh yeah it would be awesome it would be awesome yeah. But you got to heat it and cool it and pay taxes on it and clean yeah, it. Yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah. Um, Chris was just letting us know he thinks this house is gorgeous. Beautiful. Agreed. Thanks for pointing that out, Chris. Um, Janet was asking, uh, how do you know which fe features upgrades are standard on a floor plan and elevation? Is there a list somewhere that our consultant can send us? Um, yeah, if you talk to your consultant, they can tell you um, what's included in, in which plan and the plans that you're mm -hmm. looking at. Yeah, particularly the live oak because it's a it's kind of a, a newer design. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's not gonna you know the only ones that start to get a little bit confusing sometimes to people are the actual model homes, right? Because um, we've put some things in the models that 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 uh, you know sometimes they're an option, sometimes they're included. Um, 
anyway, the the uh, on, on the Live Oak though, it's it's based kind of loosely on the Frio, mm -hmm. uh, which is a model home there in Bernie. So you could certainly go there and get an idea. And then yeah, the consultant can definitely give you you know if you're looking for like you know. I mean, we're going to be pretty standard across the board on things like cabinets, countertops, uh, light fixtures, plumbing fixtures, electrical fixtures, mm -hmm. um, you know, carpets, uh, th those kinds of things, appliances, where it starts to get a little bit mixed up is it on, on actual like cabinet features, uh, right. whether they have to tilt out trays or pull out cabinets or different things like that. And that's the only part that starts to get a little bit um, can can get a little bit confusing. So we understand that. But yeah, definitely with your consultant and they can walk you through that. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, Jackie says uh, she loves seeing a lot of the same options she chose in the same floor plan. Awesome. Makes you feel better about your choices. Jackie, yes. a bit of a it's all going to work. It's all going to be okay. Um, we've got Tracy uh, saying hi. She's building in Henley. Right out 290. Beautiful. And Wes said, never said it would be cheap, the 4,000 square feet, but it would be That's awesome. A fact. Yeah. That's a fact. Absolutely. Completely agree. All right, where are we headed next, Dawn? All right, next we are headed into that kitchen. Okay. So here I'll we go. Let's go check it out. Wow, this kitchen is this, amazing. This is an awesome kitchen. This is our favorite spot in the whole house. Wow. Everyone like grab it, just goes into the kitchen. And you this have is our so much spot. space in here. We Absolutely. love it. So it looked like you um, added one foot to this kitchen we and make did. it a little bit wider, right? We did, because okay. I wanted a larger island countertop. It's much larger than what was in the model home for baking and parties, and this is where we kind of hang out. Mm -hmm. And Yeah, Does absolutely. the island normally have this little lip over here? It does not. It's actually, this whole lip is all added extra space on the island. Yeah, that's really nice. And it makes really it nice. great for a party. Well, and then if you do need to add extra seating, you can just add a couple very, counter stools underneath. Very true. That's, we plan to add bar stools later. Yeah, and just have it be like a little kid's breakfast area. Yes. That's Absolutely. a great idea. And it looked like we uh, changed the island out too, a little bit too as well. Yes, right? we did. We did away with the shelves that uh, are on this side. Yep. And, and the poles too as well. Oh yeah, we deleted the poles and just did, so it makes it look cleaner and... Yeah, it's very farmhouse style, which yes, I like. Yes, it does. And it matches the rest of the shaker style cabinets. Yeah, so in here you have these countertops that I know are from Doll Tile, but how did you how did you decide that you wanted these? We couldn't quite pick one from Tilson. Um, so we went and looked at Doll Tile where Tilson gets some of their stuff from. And we found this piece. We told Jerry, hey, we found this granite that we mm -hmm. just love. Is there any way that this could be an option to put in our house. And he worked his magic and made it happen. <laughs> you got it, little magic dust. <laughs> little magic dust, absolutely. Yes. So, That's awesome. So, so tell us about this area of the kitchen. Um, I love this sink. It's a nice, Thank nice, you. nice Thank you, it touch. was an upgrade to add the white kitchen sink and also an upgrade, we did the black stainless steel appliances. Um, and then our backsplash on the back, we kind of went Vertical with it versus yeah, I like the horizontal. That. That's really just that's to kind a of cool break way it to, up a bit. Mm -hmm. It's a cool way to just kind of add a different design touch because you've got the horizontal Absolutely. in the rest of the kitchen, but then right here it, it almost draws your eye like, oh, is it different? Yes, it but is. it's the same. Yeah, absolutely. And then behind sure. us, um, we have our, I guess, breakfast bar, coffee bar, mm -hmm. and this truly would have been your entryway into the dining room. But since we didn't do a dining room, we added a breakfast bar, and of course we got lots of cabinet space yeah. to go along with it. Ooh, Adding we had tons about of five extra feet storage. of cabinet space here. Yes, and it's nice to have all that storage. Yeah, that is super helpful. And then I just, I love how you kind of took the house and stretched it, because you really do have so much room to walk through in here, and then this is all open. I mean, it just really, it makes the whole space really open and inviting. Yes, we love it. And like I said, this is the hangout area. Everybody wants to hang out in the kitchen when we have parties and gatherings. Yeah. And you're not all squished. You have plenty of room to hang out. Yeah. So what else is your favorite part about this kitchen? Um, probably my pot filler. It makes it nice <laughs> to have one while I'm cooking instead of having to go around the island. Yeah. Um, it's just right there. It's very convenient. No, pop fillers are definitely on my list of things that I would absolutely love to have in my house. Right. It's an addition waiting to come. No, for sure. sure. And then oh, yeah. my other favorite thing in the house would be 
the cedar trim that's around the top of the house uh -huh. along, it pulls in this cedar beam yeah um, and that was this added after the fact no this was all standard it comes standard with the san jacinto awesome. yeah absolutely so the the cedar beam and then the stone in the back of the kitchen comes yes. standard in, in the in the san jacinto um, and it looked like you added the cedar trim to go to, to match with the cedar beam yes. too as well yes we did absolutely yeah, that looks really great. It just kind of ties in the whole space and then it continues to tie in the box beams in the living room and it's just all very fluid. Pulls it in. Yeah. And then another thing we did, we went with a secondary color on our island to mm -hmm. kind of break things up. Mm -hmm. It's not white like the rest of the house. It breaks it up a little bit. Yeah, this color is really nice. I like that a lot. I also I like the pendant lights that you have Thank over you. the island. Thank you. As we saw them and we loved them. It was supposed to be just one standard light. And I was like, how can we put some pendant lights up there? Yeah, brighten it up just yeah. a little bit. Well, let's go check out this dining space. Wow, so you have another nice little light here too as well. We did, and they tie together and they match. It's just a bigger version. Yeah, Absolutely. and these windows too are also huge and let in a ton of light. And then you've got easy access onto your back patio. Yes. We added the patio back there from our drop zone, it pushed our porch over there. That looks great, and it, it's such a nice little sitting area, and it's covered, it so is. you can it's stay nice. out of the weather, but still enjoy your outdoor area. And then I also see that you have the uh, the blinds, the mini blinds inside the glass. Yes, we did. The full length ones. Absolutely. All right, well, how All about right. we go check out the playroom? Absolutely. Let's All right. Play, yeah. There's a lot happening in the kitchen. Yes, yes. So they took an already beautiful kitchen made here. and made it even better. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, what they did, like she was talking about, they added, this is where the adding the foot um, comes into play. So they added a whole foot to this, this side of the house to give them more room in the kitchen. And in that kitchen, the, the one foot went into the island. Um, so she's got a bigger center island um, in their kitchen where she can actually put some bar stools on that side. Um, as well in the future, but a nice, nice big island. Um, she put the three pendant lights um, over that island. Um, you know, we, we also talked about how they walled off the entry uh, to the dining room. So they've got some nice more cabinetry and, and countertops um, there where that would have just been an opening um, to the dining room. Um, and then like she was talking about, they had the farmhouse sink. Um, she added the pot filler um, to that, upgraded the appliances and made changes to the island itself. So in the San Jacinto, what would be included usually would be kind of like a bookcase um, kind of shelving, style shelving at the end and some some newel posts that, that are in there. And she's kind of simplified it, made it look a little bit cleaner to go with the rest of the, her cabinet choices. Um, and also, you know, a, an offset color and, you know, different color to give you a little bit of contrast, uh, which is always, always a good choice. Um and you know just beautiful and then like she was mentioning she couldn't find exactly what she wanted um in our granite choices so went to our supplier and found one that she liked better and we were able to get her a, a custom price on that and and get it to her so yeah and, and there are there are the rare occasions where we have we have had customers do what's called a slab select which is what this mm -hmm. is so they actually go and, and pick out their um the exact slab they want it's pretty rare you, you have to do that but in this particular case that's exactly what they want to do so what they ended up doing yeah. um and then yeah this made it a lot like uh very similar to kind of the the way the the shiloh was done it reminded me a little bit of that it, it, oh yeah with the kind of another, the coffee bar yeah another space to put like yeah your your coffee maker and you know that kind of stuff that, that maybe maybe it's not happening you know you don't want to clutter up around where your cooking area is which so i think is a great idea i love what yeah. they do with the space i love yeah. it looks great yeah so again Drop your questions in the chat. We'd love to answer them for you. Uh, we're going to keep rolling on with the, the various videos and, and images. But if you got questions, ask them. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, most of what's coming in is compliments on, on yes. the top. Well, so, yeah, because it's absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah, yeah awesome. Sarah's saying, you know, love the brightness of the kitchen. Beautiful design choices. Jackie loves the granite. Um, says that she needs it too. You can't have that granite, Jackie. Can't have that one. That's taken. But if we can find something close, I bet we can. And then the teals are letting us know that they're here. Their foundation form started last awesome. week on their San Jacinto. So awesome. Brilliant. Well, let's go take a look at this playroom. 
because it is amazing. All right, okay, this room is sweet. This is one of the main rooms that I just love. I don't have toys all over my house. It's all confined to one area. <laughs> and you can just close the door and yes. this is here. You're like, there's Absolutely. nothing in yeah. there. Out of sight, out of mind. It's Absolutely. nice. I see why that you uh, put a wall right here. Correct. To block off, so that, you know, the kids in here, they're playing and everything else. I mean, they have toys all over the place. You can just, just close, close that door. Just close that door and nobody knows. <laughs> out of sight, out of mind, yep. absolutely. Yes. So this is originally the dining room? Correct. And then this is this is what would have been the flex room or bedroom five option that Correct. you can add onto this plan. Mm -hmm. And then you just kind of knock down that wall. Them all. Then. <laughs> That's such a good idea. I love that you kept the fans too because then you get some airflow. Yes, for absolutely. sure. We deleted the beans, but we did. Mm -hmm. We put a fan in here. Yeah, I mean, it would have been a very fancy playroom. Oh, for sure, with the beans oh, up yeah. there. <laughs> absolutely. I know we, we, we went back and forth talking about should we keep, keep the beans, yeah. should we not? Out. Absolutely. And we ended up taking them out. Yeah, well, I think it's. It's nice. It's just playroom. So oh, you don't yeah. need anything too. For sure. Thirsty. Also, too, I see you have two outlets. We do. Um, we planned uh, Santa is going to revamp this room. Nice. And <laughs> we're going to hang some TVs up here for video games, movie room, and we're actually going to add a couch and kind of move all the toys over to the flex room. And this would be a media game room. And yeah. And on the back side where the flex room was will be our toys. game room and mm -hmm. toys. Nice. So that's a really nice way to just kind of. Yes, and you have in. age groups from 11 yeah. to 3 to kind of break it up so everybody has their own area yeah. here and yeah. can hang out. Everybody's got their own thing that they yeah. can do. Yeah. For sure. Absolutely. Also, I noticed uh, we have another room we passed by in the yes, touch room. Yes, we did. We can Let's go take look a look. Room. Absolutely. Oh, Rachel, I noticed that you have a full bathroom here? Yes, we right? did. We actually, instead of the half bath that comes standard in the San Jacinto, okay. we added a full bath with a walk-in shower. That's nice. awesome. Nice. Makes it very convenient. So that would originally come with the flex room option? No, we are, uh, does it come with the flex room option? Actually it does, does it? so it comes with the fifth bedroom option, but oh, okay. instead of adding the fifth bedroom, we expand it the uh, flex room and the dining room into one big game room and just kept just the fifth kept bathroom the bath. option absolutely gotcha. and then what we did is we put a stand-up shower and then put a puddle sink in there it's, it's a hot commodity around here the boys go in there they get muddy we throw them in there well and they it's so off. close to the back door For you can sure. just be like nope just they're not go, tracking through the yep. house <laughs> absolutely and then this is awesome you have like a whole walk through utility area yes we did we deleted the cabinets that were in here because uh -huh. we did the drop zone back here and it's the washer dryer and leads to your drop zone so when the kids come in from school they just drop all their stuff hang it up and it's not thrown all over the floor it's yeah things nice and you've got the nice little covered area right here so when you do step out you've kind of got room to you know towel yes. off out of the rain and then come inside right it's awesome to have that's so great lovely. Um, let's let's go get the master. Let's go take a look. All right, All right. so that playroom. Great idea. Yes. Absolutely great idea to to quarantine. Excuse me, I mean partition off the kids <laughs> in their own space. I see the I see the Nerf guns. I see you know, and Grant, I'm sure, and Rachel could comment. I'm sure that stuff never makes its way out of of, of those four walls. <laughs> um, I don't know about it. their house. My house, the Nerf gun wars, especially if I'm involved, tend to spill out into other areas of the house. You have to have, there's a difference between cover and concealment. I mean, you, you can't just hide. I mean, there, there are rules here. There are rules. Sometimes, wow. sometimes the, the, they spill outside and, and yeah, uh, mom's never happy, but a win is a win. But this is, this is a great idea. And the fact that they can do, you know, they, the, the home is built in such a way that if they do want to partition off later, that's easy to do, you know. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the roof is already being held up with the framing that's in the attic. So if they wanted to stick a wall in there, they could absolutely easily do that. So <laughs> David says that he and Jerry had a nerf battle during that's the what I'm saying. Though. See, yeah. now I noticed David didn't mention who won, which leads me to believe Jerry probably Jerry walked did. out with yeah. the victory. Yeah, that's how that goes. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a foregone. So what they did here on uh, to create this playroom is there's actually a custom option with the San Jacinto that turns the flex space into a fifth bedroom with the full bath. So what they did is opted for that option. And that included that, 
you know, converting the, the powder room into a full bathroom um, with that. And then they just took down what would have been the wall um, in between uh, the uh, bedroom and the playroom. I mean, in the, what would have been the dining room. So they took that wall down to make this all one space. Um, and then like they were talking about added in a ceiling fan to the dining room side and took out, you know, what would have been the standard ceiling treatment um, in the dining room. Cause it was, it's a little bit too fancy for a playroom. <laughs> And, and, and you, that's all you'll notice the the roof the ceiling height difference so mm -hmm. the, the the san jacinto this particular elevation has a 10 foot ceiling in the dining room and that front bedroom on the other side the, the symmetrical part uh right in here and and so that's why you're seeing that the ceiling height difference from this room to that because they are you know typically two different rooms two different plate heights so right. it's kind of a kind of a cool thing you put the yeah tvs up a little higher and yeah, there's actually room for four TVs there. I'm not saying you have to get four, but there's easily room for four TVs. You don't we know what going, size TV she got. Like if we were going be, Mario they Kart, they could be two seven inches. Yeah, like, you this don't would know. be this would be optimal for Mario Kart racing. This would be great. That would be amazing. Yeah, that would be really good. Cool ideas. Very, very cool ideas. What else are they are, doing here? We are, we are full of good ideas. And um, that is the main thing that they did in here. Um, it's just combining combining those two rooms um, into that. And then we talked about the the uh, full bathroom. Uh, they also added in the alternate utility and drop zone. So when you do that on the San Jacinto, what it gives you is that drop zone area gives you a smaller covered porch uh, that you're coming into you know, from, from the side of the home and then moves your bigger front porch to behind the house. I mean, your bigger back porch to, to behind the house, which we'll, we'll show you a little bit later. Yeah, um, really, yeah. But yeah, this is yeah, also lots a really of space, good lots space. and lots and lots of space in here. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, room for obviously a, a stand-up fr uh, freezer, which the the standard model has as well. Um, mm -hmm. Lots of cabinetry. You know, again, most ninety-one percent of our folks live out in a rural area. Um, they they when they go to town, they got to go get. You know, we don't have a Costco right around the corner, so they're going and they're stocking up and uh, having mm -hmm. a place to store all that stuff, particularly with three boys as the middle of three boys, I can tell you, and Ms. Rachel, you are just getting started. They're going to eat you out of house and home. So <laughs> there, there's not enough food you can pile in here because if you're anything like the house looks like a super cool place, it's going to become the hangout. Like yours will always be the house right. where the playroom yes. is, where the food is. And, and yeah, so, so gear up, it's coming. It's going to be a lot of fun. Which is always a good position to be in as the, as the mom, because then you know what's going on with the kids. Like you can be like the cool mom and know what's Well, what's I guess happening. where they live small town enough, everybody knows what's going on. I, mean, <laughs> I think in Ames, Texas, it doesn't take long for word to get around. It, it, it's, it's at the back door before it leaves the front door. I think that's how it goes out there. That's so, good. Very, very cool. Where are we I... headed next? Well, first, let's catch a couple questions. Um, we've right. got Kelly who is asking if we have the option for hidden plugs. Okay, so I, I think what you're meeting by that, Kelly, would be like in the kitchen. Um, mm -hmm. and, and where we typically see those would be kind of under the uh, upper cabinets. I've seen I've seen that done by us. Um, it is something we want to get with the electrician in, in the local area to do to get it to get it bit out because there does have to be one every certain amount of feet for code. Um, so we want to be sure to get that. So they're not like they don't turn around or anything like that. If I'm thinking of the same thing, they're kind of just up in the in the under the cabinet area where they're not there. And what we do try and do with ours, so you see a lot of builders, they put them in the middle of the backsplash, like right in the middle. Right. Um, we do locate ours down low and we turn them horizontal so that so that they're not like like in your you face. Know, the, yeah. Exactly. You know, like like Rachel here, you know, they spent some money on a really beautiful backsplash. Last thing I do is stick a big out there in the middle of it. So particularly if yeah, you're doing I, accents or decos or. Yeah. Or when you've gone to the trouble of doing subway tile, which is all this way. And then all of a sudden they cut your, you've got an outlet that's like this. And so they cut your tiles and yeah. yeah it's just, and inevitably it's going to happen. Nothing. So, and, but to your point, Kelly, yeah, it can be done. Um, we did it on my aunt and uncle's house where it's kind of up in just below the upper cabinets, uh, actually built under the bottom side of the cabinets. So oh, nice. something we can do, but then you got to think about, you get, plugs going up there so you, you can't hide those you can't hide the cord yeah right thank you the cord that's what i was thinking of yeah and then we have peter asking does the breckenridge have the ceiling wood trim as a standard option like the model okay so it has it in the family room like on the cathedral ceiling part and it has it in the master bedroom it has a box mm -hmm. beam detail very similar to the san jacinto's uh family room and it also has i think there's actually a little cedar accent above the master tub in the breckenridge as well so yes it has it has it in those but it does not have it in the formal dining room 
uh, to speak of to start out, but it has it in the in the master bedroom mm -hmm. for sure and in the family room. Yeah. Um, so yeah, sure. And it has yeah. it, of course, in the kitchen as well. I didn't mention that. All right. That is the questions that I see. So let's go check out their absolutely gorgeous master suite. Okay. Oh, this is nice. Thanks. We love the tall ceilings in here with yeah. the cedar beams, which are actually standard. Or no, this was an upgrade for the cedar beams. The cedar trim? To uh, add the so, cedar trim? Yeah, see, cedar trim was an upgrade, absolutely. But the cutout that we have right here is actually standard, which I really like. That cutout. really just elevates the whole entire master suite. That's absolutely. Really cool. Because it gave us some character, too. Yeah. For sure. And I mean, you still have the really tall ceilings, which is great. Absolutely. And you, it just gives you something to work Yeah, out. absolutely. Something got a pretty. little sitting area right here. Yeah. Okay. Work from home special. Yep. <laughs> absolutely. Good COVID. Yeah, and you've got these nice, huge windows as well. Do yeah. these, are these typically in the master suite? Absolutely. So these are standard too as well in the house. Um, it opens it up a lot. And yeah. And gives a nice light, especially depending on how your house is positioned. So right now, it looks like they can get a lot of natural light if they yes, want to. Yes, it does. In the evening, it's pretty sunny on this side of the house. Yeah. yeah. I've definitely noticed like the, the thing about this plan mm -hmm. that is really catching my eye is the amount of natural light in every single room. Oh yeah. Like every room has huge windows and just, you don't even need to turn the no, lights on. No, nope. Most days no. I don't. I go with no lights on because there is so much natural yeah. lighting and we love that factor. Yeah, that's really cool. Well, yeah, let's check out cool. the master bath. Well, this is an awesome bathroom. It's different. I like it. It is. We switched it up quite a bit from what your traditional St. Jacinto bathroom would be. Uh -huh. We deleted the big tub and here we took out the drawers so I could have knee space to be able to work my makeup and get dressed in the morning. Yeah, and then you kept the countertops and the cabinets consistent from the kitchen. Correct. Just we just did those all throughout and moved them in. Yeah, that Absolutely. looks really great. As we we liked it. And let's talk about this shower, because this is this insane. Is, totally. I'm <laughs> Everyone a shower Everyone loves this shower. We deleted the tub, and we just went with a big, massive shower. We have two shower heads. There's a rain shower tub, a uh, rain shower head up top. We actually extended these ceilings in here so we could get some natural lighting in here, and we added the two windows, mm -hmm. and it's great. It adds in lots of natural light. And then you've got a cutout up there? Yes, we like, so actually added that to help with the steam to vent out to be able to suck up into the van, uh, to the fan. Okay, nice. so it that's really cool. It's just open right into the shower area. Right, and we did it in cedar to yeah. kind of pull it in throughout the rest of the house. Well, and that's then, awesome. And then floor to ceiling tile. Yes, we did. We went all the way to the top with the tile. That's really cool. And I love the frameless glass too. That makes it a, nice and sleek mm -hmm. and you don't have that old frame. Mm -hmm. And then so you have the other vanity on this side. Yes, this is my husband's vanity and it's just your standard vanity. Um, yeah. Gives him his own space. We're not having to <laughs> bump into each other. You don't other. have to share drawers. For sure. <laughs> you have your own thing. area. Don't get into mine. Yeah. Yep. yep. Stay yeah. on your side. For sure. <laughs> And then in here, we just have the normal closet that comes normal with the plan. closet that comes with the plan. Mm -hmm. And then is this just linen area? It is. It's just the towels and then you have your drop zone, drop for your laundry. Yeah. And then you can just put your baskets down below. It's easy. Just yeah. grab them and go. For we're sure. And it gets hidden, so yeah. you don't have to see it. Yeah. Well, let's go check out the other half of the house. Let's go see. Wow. <laughs> Quite the retreat. Quite yes. the retreat. So yeah, great place to just kind of escape. And again, the, the San Jacinto, much like the Breckenridge, Ridge, the, the master has its own entrance. So no other bedroom share an entrance with it. It is, it is truly its own owner's retreat. Um, you go back there and all that's there through that door is the master bedroom, the master bath, the master closet. Um, mm -hmm. Just a nice little escape to relax um, from chasing the three boys around. Or once you are victorious in the Nerf gun war, mom. Which <laughs> Good place to hide. Yeah. So yeah, they made a lot of great, great changes in the space. It's it's beautiful as as is as it comes, but they just enhanced it. Um, you know, the, the only change that was made in the actual master bedroom itself was to add the two-step crown molding to have that in the 
the cedar, um, you know, the, the roughs on wood up there. Um, yeah, and I want to go back real quick. I'm sorry, wall. Don, to, to Peter's good. question. Is in reading it again, Peter Kerr, the the, the ceiling wood trim. Um, he could have been talking about like the cedar that we're talking about now. That the crown molding in yeah. these pictures, and yeah, that that would not be in, included. We could do that in the Breckenridge, but what is included is the the box beam detail. So just want to be sure, Peter, that I right. got that question. If there's something else, uh, go ahead and ask it again. I'm be sure we got that right. Yeah. Um, and then Kimberly actually had a question in, in the master oh, yeah. bedroom. Um, is that an AC in, intake above the bed and a vent or both vents? Okay. Well, I didn't, I didn't catch it in the video, so we may have to rewind through and see, but I will, what I'll say is that every single one of our bedrooms in our homes, um, and probably the study in this case too, where it could be closed off is going to have, uh, an, a, a return air. So air taking back as well as a supply at least one supply the master probably has a couple um so the, we do that so that we can make sure that we got pressure balancing across the house that's part of it but also kind of a temperature equilibrium um mm -hmm. so you kind of if you've ever been in, in a different home where maybe the door was halfway there you closed the door to a bedroom like the master bedroom uh and the ac or the heater kicked on let's be honest it's texas and the ac kicked, <laughs> the AC on, kicked on yeah and you heard kind of the <laughs> kind of the whistling where it's pulling the air under the door or struggling to pull the air under the door. Um, maybe you got the big giant return, just one of them in the hallway or something. We don't do that. Um, there's one in the hallway and it's there for a reason, but there's also one in every single bedroom so that you can close the door and still maintain pressure balance throughout the home as well as temperature equilibrium throughout the home. Um, and those are designed by our, the HVAC companies. So they're actually the folks that perform our manual J, the computer software that lays out uh, kind of how many cubic feet per minute are going to go into each bedroom, uh, each room period. So, I mean, even mm -hmm. like pantries and in some cases, walk-in closets have their own calculation. So, um, but yeah, there's, there's a, and looking at the picture now I'm seeing. Yeah. I'm guessing the new, second one that she saw was, is the intake. Yeah. There's probably a, uh, yeah, they're typically the supply and the return aren't right next to each other. Um, mm -hmm. cause you just have this kind of thing going back and forth, but, uh, it is not uncommon to have, for sure, a return in every single bedroom and then a supply or two, depending on the size of the room. The master's probably going to have two in this case. Okay. Great question. All right. Awesome. Um, so the majority of the changes here were made in that bathroom. Um, so I've got the changes kind of called out and then we do have larger pictures if we if we want to look again. But um, the big thing, you know, as you go and she mentioned um, that shower like let's we, we got to talk about the shower. So they raised the ceilings um, to add in in the windows above um, and then took the tile all the way to the ceiling, dual shower heads and the rain shower head above. And then that really super smart uh, cut out right up next to the vent so that they can pull the steam um, out of the shower. And that that's just that those those are that those shower. That's goals. Like, it's just amazing. Uh, so pretty. Um, and then in um, the vanity on her side, she, you know, she mentioned she took out the cabinets below to create a knee space um, for her to actually have a nice vanity space to sit down. Um, and then, you know, that's really about it. Um, that was done in there, but it makes a huge, huge impact. It did. Yeah. And the, the shower itself, again, like, you mm -hmm. know, we've seen more and more and more people uh, not doing a tub. Not and doing we, the tub. We've yeah. pulled people before. We found it about 50-50, but um, we're seeing a lot of folks that that go sans tub and just go all out on the shower, which, which I think yeah. is pretty cool. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and then let's see, we got a couple of questions about the bathroom. Uh, love the bathroom. Is the wood trim around the mirror standard in the rock wall specifically? Um, so the mirrors that you see in their bathroom, this, they were actually built by the customer. So you you have the option of, of putting in your own mirrors if you'd like. And um, Mr. Alfaro actually built these mirrors himself. So that's where that came from. We, we do have the option to add wood trim um, around the mirrors that we supply, but it's not going to be quite this fancy. <laughs> he, he definitely took it the, an extra step. Um, these hey, take all that, husbands who don't build your own mirrors for your wives. Thanks, yeah. Mr. Alfaro. We really appreciate that <laughs> a lot. Thank you so much. Rachel did say that like he would take orders if, if we wanted. So yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she asked him or not. <laughs> exactly. But uh, to answer your question, Rachel, yeah, there, there's 
we're not, it's not going to be included as far as like the price, again, the price you're getting on the website, that's not going to have the, the trim around the mirrors because there are so many different options. Uh, but your consultant can certainly price that whichever and show you what all we offer. Because um, mm -hmm. we can get pretty close to this look, but yeah, it's not going to be a full on barn door look quite like that. Like this, yeah. Hats off to Mr. Alfaro. Well done. Yes. I, I, I was blown away when, when she said he built them himself. I was like, oh, I need this. In fact, Don, in full disclosure, you, what you did was you reached out to the homeowner before because you knew. I knew somebody was going to ask. At the picture, <laughs> People are going to ask. Uh, they're that beautiful. So, well, we showed it to enough people internally, and everybody's like, "Oh my gosh, there's mirrors!" I'm like, "Yeah, somebody's gonna ask. We're gonna get yeah. asked." Yeah. Um, and then Kimberly has a follow up question on the air return. She's asking if that was standard in all plans. It is now. Yeah. What is going to vary though, Kimberly, is based on where you're building because the a lot of things go into that calculation. So obviously. Um, what climate zone you're in, two or three that we're building in, and then what type of insulation that we're using. Is it the bad insulation? Is it spray foam insulation? Um, window sizes, ceiling heights, um, mm -hmm. direction that your home is facing, zip code, average annual temperature. I mean, all that stuff is put in to this to the computer program. And that's that and that calculates how many cubic feet per minute each room is going to need and then right sizes the equipment. In other words, there is such a thing for putting too much AC tonnage on a home. Um, mm -hmm. The AC does have to run enough, cycle long enough to do its job, which is to extract the moisture out of the air. It is an air conditioner, first and foremost. So by definition, it conditions the air, it extracts the moisture out of In this part of the world, that's its job, is to right. take the moisture out of the air. Um, in fact, we had to put dehumidifiers on them when we do spray foam insulation for that very reason. Um, there's other parts of the country where they have to add <laughs> humidity. Like you go to Colorado, Wyoming, you're going to find humidifiers in their basements because right. they, you wake up with chapped lips and crusty eyes and bleeding noses. <laughs> and cause and you can leave the that. bread out and it turns to croutons overnight. Right. Exactly. So, uh, it is standard in all plans to have for sure return airs in every single mm -hmm. bedroom, uh, as well as one main return, uh, in the hallway situation somewhere, uh, or as close to the, uh, HVAC mechanical equipment as possible. And then varying by plan to plan is going to be, you know, does it go in a, if it's a study that's closed off, a lot of times you'll see them in there. Uh, you won't typically see them in a dining room because again, it's not a closed off area. It's usually done in, in large areas that can be closed off. Right. Uh, so bedrooms um, are, are the main culprits. Bedrooms and some flex rooms and studies. Great, great question. Okay. All right, we got some some follow up um, HVAC questions. Um, do we generally use single or multi stage AC units? Typically, Chris, you're going to see a single stage unit, um, and, and most of what we're calling for because of the insulation types that we're using. It's not, you know, most of our uh, contractors don't see a whole lot of benefit to doing the multi stage, but we have uh, we have had some that call for that, and we've had some customers that that opt to do the multi stage. Now there's okay. two different types of multi stage. There's multi multi stages. <laughs> there are uh, there's there's variable speed air handlers. That's the part that's in the attic, the actual the the blower, the air handler, and, the, and then there's uh, very two stage compressors. That's the outside unit. Um, and so sometimes you have one or the other, sometimes you have neither, sometimes you have both. Um, but what it kind of the logic of the, like start with the variable speed air handler first, which again, this is not going to be included on, on the homes that we build, but, um, it's kind of like when you start a treadmill, um, or even start your car instead of, instead of it starting at, at 15 miles an hour, it mm -hmm. builds up to that. That's what a variable okay. speed air handler does is as the AC kicks on, it builds up to that. Um, and then the uh, two stage compressor, the outside system, um, same thing. It's kind of, you know, maybe it's not always having to run in, in top gear um, necessarily to keep your house cool. Sometimes it just can cut back to the same thing with uh, pool pumps. There's variable two stage pool pumps that they'll run at full speed for a couple hours a day and half speed for some other day. But we find that, that, um, for what those cost over and above the, the, uh, standard equipment, a lot of our customers don't see that cost savings on their electrical bills. Um, mm -hmm. particularly these days when they can choose a different provider and get a little bit lower rate. Okay. So, and they, they, now they do, they are less wear and tear on equipment. There's no doubt about that, but they also have more components and parts and things that could go wrong. Could so go there's, wrong, yeah. there's a trade-off there. You know, the, the, the simpler system, the single stage systems 
are a simpler system. Um, so it's a, it does come in a personal choice. Yeah. So I think you kind of answered Wesley's question, but just to double check, is there a major price difference between the single and the multi-stage AC units? There can be. But it, it really starts to get pricey when you get into the bigger equipment. The four-ton and five-ton equipment, it gets very expensive to go from a single stage to a multi-stage. Um, the smaller stuff, the the two, two and a half, three-ton stuff, it's not it's not crazy, crazy different, but it is quite a bit um, to to get it to, once you get into the four and for, for sure the five-ton. Okay. Uh, Chris says, thank you. It's a great explanation. So he understands. Oh, thank goodness. I'm glad somebody got it. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> and then Janet is asking, not sure what our zone is. What type of wall insulation would be used in Grayson County? I'll bet Dawn knows. Way so you're going to be in climate zone three. Uh, so you are getting spray foam insulation as the, in, the standard included in your home. Mm -hmm. So you'll so have that, foam, that dehumidifier getting, that yeah, Eric the was whole, talking about. Yeah. Match. Yep. The whole thing. Um, and then let's see. Um, Wes says that he is glad that his wife is at work um, and not seeing this because she would want those mirrors. <laughs> uh -huh. And Jesse was saying that she and her husband were just talking about mirror framing when they met for the floor plan. And she's she's going to get him to watch this and make her some mirrors. So. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm yeah, this is going to be a rough this is going to be a rough show on a lot of husbands going to be be a honey do list show yeah i also find it also find it interesting that west thinks that people at work don't watch the show <laughs> <laughs> or that they can't watch it later but i guess she'll be packing yeah so. yeah tell her we didn't tell her we weren't on today yeah we you don't know what happened it didn't it thing. didn't broadcast like. yeah good luck good luck wesley best good luck um linda is saying she was told by a tilson rep that you have to have a tub in the house mm. designed to get appraised you ever heard well, that? Linda, I, um, I hate that you were told that. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't know that that's t is that if that's true. Um, in fact, I know that's probably not true. So uh, I don't know if they were misunderstood. They misunderstood. Um, and but but I mean, you certainly have to have a bathroom or two in there right. for it to appraise. But they don't have to have a tub necessarily. Yeah, there was a, like a few years ago. There was a study that that like it was harder for resale if you didn't have a tub. That was a rumor that a lot of realtors, I don't, or I think tub manufacturers probably contributed to that rumor as well. But for appraisal, as long as there's something in the bathroom that gets you clean, like a shower or a tub, it would count as a full bathroom. So I'm not sure where that water hose hooked to a spray. Not, nozzle. A, not a water hose. Like it has to be like an official, official looking thing. Um, Let's see. And then more HVAC questions. Um, he was asking if a house requires multiple AC, AC units, can the customer specify specific rooms for each unit? Ooh, great question, Hugh. So the answer, the short answer is probably not. Unless, I mean, if it makes, if it makes good sense. Yeah. So the HVAC, uh, who's doing the, the, the layout, okay, who does a manual J software, they are going to, if it requires multiple units, they're mm -hmm. going to do it where it makes the most sense on those two units based on how many cubic feet per minute they, that each room requires, couple that up with how many cubic feet per minute that these those two systems will, will put out to optimize their performance. Um, that being said, if you want it laid out a certain way, or even if you have a single unit, but you want that single unit zoned, or maybe you want the bedrooms on, on one thermostat, but you want the kitchen, living, utility room, dining area on a different thermostat. You can actually accomplish that with one unit that is zoned. I know we just blew the whole show. No, we're no, all we're going to do is talk about HVAC now. From here <laughs> we're showing you a beautiful home and everybody that wants can, to talk about HVAC. That can be done. Um, can you tell that we're based in Texas, everybody? Um, <laughs> I know, HVAC right? HVAC matters a lot here. So... Uh, the answer to your question is if, if you have an idea, Hugh, that you're wanting like, hey, man, I really want to be able to keep these rooms on one thermostat and these on another, we can accommodate that. And we know that ahead of time when we send the manual, when we send all the information over to the HVAC contractor, we'll give them that information like, hey, in a perfect world, this is what the customer wants. Give us some feedback. And sometimes they'll be like, yep, cool. No problem. We can do it just like that. Or then they say, well, here's what we're here's what we'd like to recommend they do to optimize the performance of the equipment. Hopefully that makes sense to you. All righty. Um, Janet says her husband is very happy about his spray foam. Oh, good. We aim to um, please, Janet. Yes. Wes is asking if Hunt County is zone three as well, and it is. Mm -hmm. So spray foam for you as well. Yep. Uh, let's see. David is offering to take the mirrors out of all the videos in the future to make it easier on husbands. You can't do that, David, because that's the only opportunity our, our customers get to see you. 
because you're in the mirror. <laughs> oh man, calling him out on the mirror exposure. <laughs> you can't avoid it. <laughs> you know how to hit a videographer right in the teeth. So that day. was that was not meant as as <laughs> it was meant as it's your opportunity to shine. That's Plus, houses just look weird without mirrors anyway. <laughs> David says they don't want to see them. <laughs> Everybody, tell David you do want to see them. Yeah. Um, Julie is asking, does getting spray foam insulation mean there won't be the pink batting on the attic floor? Yes. That's what it means. There'll be yellow. Oh, any other color batting. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. There'll be yellow splotchy stuff everywhere. Um, yes. that's what it means. It won't be on the floor of the attic. It will be on the, the, on the backside of the, of the decking. Um, yeah, it, it kind of gets, it kind of gets everywhere. It gets kind of dripped down. So there'll be some mm -hmm. pieces, some foam pieces on the, on the floor of the attic, but. But for the most part, yeah, you'll be looking at your your ceiling joist and the back side of the sheetrock. You'll be able to yeah. see pretty well all of it. Yeah, you're not going to be tracking stuff around your at you know every time you come down out of the attic. Oh, it's going to be nice. Uh, Wes says he cannot distract his wife with packing because he's already packed. Oh, he, she does have a lot of packing. Never mind, she she does have a lot of packing. So yeah, so she's normal. Yeah. She's, everything's yeah. yeah, everything's good. I've I've I'm going on vacation too. I still have to do all my packing. So. Um, Linda says, thanks for all the info on the tub. And Julie's very excited to not be walking on fiberglass. So, yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not a fun thing to walk on. Although we do recommend shoes if you're going to climb in an attic. Please wear shoes, no matter yes. what. Please wear shoes. There's there's lumber up there. There's I mean, a nail or two exposed up there. Mm -hmm. Like, don't go up there without shoes on. Yeah. But yeah, it's no fun to track the fiberglass back down yeah. and through the rest of your house. My son will take the garbage to the street with no shoes. And by the way, we're not on like a little city lot. Like he's trekking out in his socks. Yeah. Makes mom super happy. Yeah. Super my youngest does that too. My youngest daughter, she'll, she'll do that. She just like walks around everywhere we go. She just like takes off her shoes and walk around, walks around. So all of her socks have holes in them. Cause she wears, she wears them out. Where are your shoes? Where are your shoes? Where are your shoes? I bought you some slides on. Put some slides on. Not anything. Just no. slides, throw those on. Uggs. I don't care. Oh. My kids don't have Uggs. Am I talking? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, no, Jackie, we have not seen the guest bath yet, but we are going there right that's, that's now. That's Jackie's quiet, nice way of saying, quit your banter. Hurry and up. The video. Yeah. <laughs> Jackie's the place it's to be. <laughs> so let's go look at the secondary, the boys' bedrooms and their bathroom. Come on guys, let's go check out the boys' side of the house. All right, the boys' room. To our left side, we have one room. They're all just standard rooms. Yeah. The only thing we did add was an accent wall in each of the boys' rooms. They were excited about picking out their colors for their rooms. Did they get to come with you to the they color appointment? They did not. We just made it simple and yeah. easy and brought colors home and they got to choose. You gave them the wheel and you're like, all right, pick your color. Pick your color. <laughs> yeah. And this one's cute, the green wall with the dino. Thank you for our little man. And I mean, even with all three of these secondary bedrooms, the window sizes are just huge. Yes, and they're all standard. They come with uh, the San Jacinto. Yeah, and in this room, last and final, it's, why does it seem bigger? It's this 10 foot ceiling in here. Everyone thinks this room's bigger and they're all about the same size. Yeah. It's that nice tall ceiling that gives you that illusion that it's a bigger room. Yeah. Totally. That's awesome. All it's, right. Well, I did see something really cool on the way in here. Yes. Let's go check out their bathroom. We added a little touches in here to from what the model home is. When yeah. you come in, everyone notices the shiplap wall. That is really cool. And you just left it natural. We Do you did. plan on painting it or staining it? We're later trying on? to make that decision and it's so hard. So everybody's like, leave it. We love it this color. Yeah, so no, it does look really great as it. it is. Wow, I like the tub by the way too. Yes, yeah. we did a larger tub for the boys since we didn't do a tub in ours in case we ever need to get in there and soak, we have that option. Yeah, yeah. and that tub looks wider and it just is. larger it's a giant than a normal tub. one. It's nice to have. And then floor to ceiling tile again. All the way up. Is that the same tile that was in the master bath? It bath? is, it's all the way across in all three bathrooms. Yeah, that looks really great. And I love what you added with the floating shelf. Thank Your you. little customizations yes. are so cute. Thank you. All right, well, let's go check out that after our living space. Let's go see. All right. So is yeah, that not so, the most beautiful hall bath you've ever seen? Like kind of a lot. Yeah. That's this is they're they're doing they did some really amazing things in this. They home, did. So yeah. Really, really impressive. I love, love what they did with it. Love love that they let us 
you know, kind of start out with the palette and then they made it their own. I thought that was really, really brilliant of them. Yes. Um, so these are the boys' bedrooms. Um, like you're saying, they're about in this plan. They're all about the same size, um, but you do have that one room that has the 10 foot ceiling. So it, it feels a little bit bigger when you walk in there, but these are really good size bedrooms um, with huge windows. Yeah, plenty of space. And you, when you look on the website and see the sizes of the bedrooms, that that that's the interior to interior dimension, and it's not including the closet. So you still have closets um, in addition to those dimensions. So it's, it's 11 four by 12 four. That doesn't include the closet space. So you still have closet space on top of that. Um, lot, some builders won't do that. They'll, they'll include the closet in the bedroom dimension. So something to consider. Right. Yeah. And yeah. So there were, I want to say there's a couple of things that my, so my daughter got to watch this video when we were driving okay. to the Central Texas Christmas party. And she, so what did Taylor think? She went gaga over uh, the Griswold shirt that yes. was wearing like that. Lost her mind over that. The, the, uh, the teacup Yorkie that's been carried around. I know, and I, I can't believe no one has mentioned the adorable Yorkie that, that maybe you haven't seen it because it's like taco Tux, size. Yes. Right here she's Cooper, around. Yeah. And then the LED lights in, in this kid's room, like that, <laughs> that those were the three things that my teenage daughter, shocker, uh, were, were, was pointing out. So we all have our priorities. Yes. I, once I saw this video, I actually started carrying my little dog that way. Cause it's actually like a really, well, it's a really good way. Like he can't move when you're holding him like that. And he just, he's like, all right, you're, cool mom. You're choking him out. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm kind of the same way when someone has me in a chokehold, I don't move a lot. Not a chokehold. <laughs> Understood. All right. So this, this hallway bathroom, uh, so uh, quite a, you know, a couple changes going on here. Um, as she talked about, she talked about her shiplap wall. This is actually the real soffit um, product, which is why it's okay to put kind of up as a backsplash because this is usually an outdoor uh, porch uh, product. It is actually, we talked. they talked about it being natural. It is actually stained because you do treat it so that it can um, resist the water and be kind of weatherproof. Um, so it is kind of a natural natural looking color. It's actually called Canadian iced lager is the name of the stain, but it gives you that completely natural. Apparently it's dyed the color of beer. I don't know. But actually, that... I think, I think all of their colors are named after beers. Are like, they? That's how the colors are, yeah. That's how Woodtone did, did their product line. That's awesome. Uh, so that's why it's, it works, you know, in this space kind of as a backsplash because it's a, it's yeah. a weatherproof, weatherproof product. Yeah. Um, the polyurethane and... finish on it. Mm -hmm. And then like, like they mentioned, they did put in the large, they put in a large soaking tub um, instead of the regular size tub. So that if there is anybody that, that wants to soak, since you took that bathtub out of the master, mm -hmm. you've got a, got a space that you can do that. Um, and this is another mirror that, that she, she purchased herself. It came from Hobby Lobby. Um, so uh, just, you know, you're, you're welcome to do that. If you don't, don't see a mirror that you like from us, you can buy one from somewhere else and hang it up. So. Just, yes, you can. Just beautiful. This is just the, the nicest boys' bathroom I've ever seen. Nicest hall bathroom I've ever seen, but definitely knowing that this is this is for boys. It's just so pretty. So pretty. Yeah. yeah. My brothers and I would destroy it. It would not be a good thing. Yeah. So this is and then they also did, sorry, that they took the tile all the way to the ceiling in this bathroom as well, which is is an upgrade. It would normally stop low, lower than that. Because boys. I can because boys, yeah. Smart. Very, very smart. Um, Let's see, we've got a couple more questions um, coming in on our on installation. Um, speaking of installation, does Tilson add any installation to interior walls to minimize sound transmission? If not, can it be added because that game room might get loud? All right, so the answer, short answer is no, Peter, we don't. Uh, we can add it. We've had customers that it's pretty inexpensive to do it. I do want to kind of at least set an expectation out there that it, it it's not as doesn't do as much sound deadening as you might think that it does. Uh, there are some other ways to accomplish that. There's like offsetting the studs on the, on the toe plate that will help better. Cause what'll happen is the, the, um, the sound waves will still travel through the stud. The studs are still touching the sheetrock on both sides. So even though you have insulation in that cavity between the studs, the sound waves that hit that sheetrock will travel right through the stud and out the other side. Uh, if you're really, really concerned about like, you know, if you're going to have star Wars movie night going on and you've got the, Dolby, I don't even know what it is these days. Why but, would everyone not be in the room when you're having Star Wars? Seven point. I don't understand. Because football? I don't know. I don't know. Mowing on a tractor? There's all kinds of things you could be doing. Just like watching Star Wars. Well, but, if they're mowing on the tractor, they don't care if it's loud in the house. It's fine. 
also true yeah no bluetooth so anyway yeah the the uh you can add the installation um and it, it will help a, a little bit but it, there's other ways if you're really really concerned with that there's some other things we can do to help um, uh, deal with that all right awesome let's see um rachel says um that she go to go check out Love Gentry, a store in Lumberton. That's where the Griswold shirt came from. So you can get that for Taylor for Christmas. Very cool. And she says that the puppy would, would yap at her the whole time if she wasn't holding him. So. Understood. Understood. And the boys go swimming in that bathtub. Yeah, I can see. <laughs> exactly. I think you said your youngest is like three. Yeah, that's totally a tub for him. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, Carolyn is asking what the tile was in the shower. So can we go back to that okay. screen? Um, so the wall tile is arena Casper um, is the name of that tile. And the manufacturer is Dow tile, of course, that's who mm -hmm. we're going to be. So it's Dow tile arena, which is the line. And then Casper's AR05 Casper is the color. Awesome. And there was something about the, we've, we've we fixed the paint color, right? We did fix the. We did, yes. The yeah. Okay, perfect. It's changed to a great, yeah. The, the, that, this is the correct paint color. Uh, Rachel let Got us it. know ahead of time that we we had the wrong one in our files because she changed it. So, but yeah, yep. this, this house is agreeable gray. Um, cool. And then we have another Rachel that says she is getting lots of design tips for her her three boys' room. So, yes. Awesome. I would encourage most of your design tips for three boys, having been one of three boys myself, they need to be outside. That's the best place. <laughs> That's going to make you happiest. If you've got land, and you've got three boys. The best solution is outside. They play football outside. They ride bikes outside. Give them a machete. Turn them loose in the woods. They'll turn out fine. They'll turn out absolutely fine. <laughs> the part. Good suggestion. All right. Well, let's check out the outdoor space and the rest of this house. Speaking of outside, where we're throwing yeah, the kids. Speaking of going outside, let's see what we can do. So Rachel, I noticed that we did the utility drop zone option, custom option, is that correct? We did. If you come in here, you can see um, it gave us a little bit more room. Truly your back door would be where I'm standing. Uh -huh. And when you add the drop zone, it pushes it out. Your door's now here and you get just a tiny little patio over here. So it's nice that mm -hmm. it gives you the option to push your porch to the back. If we want to go over here and take a look. Yep, take a look. Yeah, this is an awesome outdoor space. It is. It's nice to have a seating area. You want to hang out and not be stuck inside. Yeah. It's nice. You can have all. Doesn't matter if it's raining, sunshine. I know because it's covered and you've got the lights. So it, it could is. be nighttime and you can just come out and hang out and have a little fire. Yeah, we have our fire pit and just a like, nice little hangout area. And eventually we're going to put a TV up to watch games. Yeah. And that'll be a great just thing. Just hang out. Well, why don't we go into the kitchen, recap a few of the things that we did talk about already, and then peace out. Awesome, let's All right. go. All right. Let's go. All right, regrouping in this incredible kitchen. Love this it. This nice yep. island, you can hang out. This I know. Where we hang out. This is exactly what you'll be doing once you start having yes, guests over. Yes, yes, <laughs> it's Absolutely. nice. Well, let's recap a few of the things about your house. So you've got the four bedrooms. Yes. How many bathrooms? In three total? three total since we did the mm -hmm. half bath and turned it into a full bath so three full bathrooms three That's full awesome. bathrooms so since you did kind of take the house and stretch it and add that little extra square footage to your kitchen what does that put us at for it's a square footage 26, wise? 26 41 26 41 yep. yeah right so, there that's an awesome way to just kind of add a little extra it does. space it gives to you all areas that, that you, you want it yeah yep so what has been your favorite part about this process so far um I guess the smooth seamlessness that it was from point A, picking everything out all the way to the end yeah. and moving in. Yeah, and while you were having your house built, you also were having your shop built. We were. So how was that? It There was no issues. It was fine. We had contractors over here, contractors over mm -hmm. here, and we didn't have any issue yeah. at all. And so what, with your shop, since a lot of our other customers either have shops or barns, what was kind of the goal with yours? Um, well, the main thing was my mom. She lives in the back half of our building. So we have a 4,000 square foot building. She has 2,000 square foot and then my husband and has the 2,000 in the front yeah. to for his workspace. We have an indoor gym. Toy just, storage. Toy storage, <laughs> we got lots of those. Yeah. It's just a nice, another hangout area. 
with the awning that we have out front. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having us over. I'm and glad y'all came to see. House. Hope everyone enjoyed it and y'all liked what y'all saw. And thank you all for watching as well. We hope that you enjoyed seeing another one of our homes and we hope to someday soon make you part of the Tilton family. So nice. So nice. Yeah. So nice. Uh, yeah, so the, of course, the porch moving over, we want to show folks that um, mm -hmm. still allowing a lot of lighting, a big tall ceiling there on the uh, on the rear covered porch. And again, you know, there's options on the San Jacinto, of course, you can do a deeper portion of this, you can do a cathedral ceiling on the porch. Um, but the, this is way more than the standard plan has on it. So which is kind of cool that they did it this way. And they they didn't need any bigger portion of this because again, they've got that big overhang on the front of their metal building. So they're right. Uh, they're good to go. Um, I'm a fan of that. Big fan of that. So what else yeah, did they do? That's great. Um, so that's really it back here. You know, they did add this door um, off of the porch uh, into that. And, and like Jerry was talking about earlier in the video, it actually has the blinds incorporated into the glass, which is very nice. You don't have to worry about the dogs messing them up or just getting... Mine always like to paw at those, so it's nice to have them in between the sheets of glass. So just built yeah, in. When I was one of three boys, I blamed lots of things on dogs we didn't have. We just <laughs> but yeah, that was great. And like I was saying earlier, this the rear covered porch is actually part of that drop zone option um, that right. they they come together. So, but yeah, it just gives you a great great space. Um, so this is the original, you know, the San Jacinto floor plan as it comes. Um, and like they were talking about, it's usually just under 2,500 square feet, um, you know, four bedrooms, two and a half baths. It's got the separate dining room, um, you know, right off. And then, and then the flex room, which if you go into the model, we've got that staged as a study, but you can do, you know, whatever you like with that room. And then the next slide is just what theirs looked like um, when they were done. And this kind of shows you why we didn't want to talk about all the changes at once, because there, there was quite a bit that they did, um, but it made, made a huge, huge impact um, to the home. So, Any more questions? Any more questions? I think there are a few, yeah. Yes, there are. But yeah, no, but now put all your uh, put your questions in the chat. Still, we're going to answer some more, but we we know we're already kind of past some people's time. But yes. if you do want to ask questions, we're still accepting them. Put them in the chat. We'd be glad to answer them for you. Yeah, um, Don will be here as long as you want. You know, no. I'll just make up answers if Eric. He's not leaving for four days. She can sit here and answer questions for, <laughs> for you know, ninety six hours straight. No factor. Sure, no problem. Um, Tracy is asking Eric, do you feel like building in the hill country is slowing down more or that Tilson is getting caught up? So I actually just talked to Mr. Pat Mayo this morning, our VP of uh, sales out in that area. He was, he was <laughs> had plenty of time to talk because he was sitting on 1604 and in traffic um, from a wreck. I talked to he, him too. He was on the phone yeah, a lot. He's sounding, <laughs> he, he's sounding like it is picking up some. Um, he, he, there is, we, we've gotten kind of through uh, you know, and of course, here we are now on what's going to get into the wet season. But we've been mm -hmm. able to, to make quite a bit of pick up quite a bit of ground. Uh, we've had some really nice, um, unseasonably warm weather uh, for this time of the year. Having said that loud, I'm sure that will jinx it. But uh, we've gotten a, a number of slabs on the ground. We got a number of frames going. There aren't there still aren't more foundation contractors and more framers. That's still part of the struggle in the hill country, not just for Tilson, but just mm -hmm. industry wide. Um, we're seeing a lot of homes, apartment complexes, commercial construction. They're just sitting, um, waiting on humans. So waiting on skilled labor. So it, it, it's not slowing down more. I don't think right now, I think, uh, but you know, any amount of, of inclement weather will do that. Right. Um, the, the ground that we've been able to make up right now, you know, we've been super, super lucky, super blessed, um, that we've had some great weather and, uh, we've made as much ground as we can up on those, but still the big struggle is availability of labor. Like there's only so much man. You have three weeks of sunny weather. It doesn't matter if there's not more framing contractors and more foundation, con reputable framing and foundation contractors. Right. Oh, okay. All right. Misty is asking, um, do you ever do full panel, thinner granite sheet in showers instead of tile? She's not a fan of grout lines. We have before. Yeah. Misty, it's not done very often with our customers, but we have done it before where you, we have a, um, we've done it with uh, silestone. I'm sorry. Well, whatever, any kind of quartz, uh, mm -hmm. and and with not as much with granite, but um, but certainly with quartz, we have. Okay. All right. Um, Wesley is asking, what building was that, and who is the builder of her metal building? Yeah, I don't think we have who the builder of the metal building is. I think uh, even 
Kelsey answered that we're not we're not real sure who did the metal building, um, mm-hmm. but there are metal building contractors all over there. And there's something to think about there for the metal building thing. And I know this is not what you don't want to get into this, but there are uh, a lot of places that sell the kits. So they sell, you know, the R panels, the um, Perlins, the Gertz, the all the stuff you would need, like the red iron that you would need to put them together, but they don't do any assembly or in the case of metal building, they don't do, they don't erect it. Um, okay. You need to get someone else to do that. Sometimes you'll hear what's called a weld up. So there's a, a separate entity or just welders you can get that, that will weld up the kit. Um, and then there are some that are turnkey that you buy the, the, they design the building for you. You buy the kit from them and they do the assembly or they, they erect it. They put the building up. Um, but most of them don't like the big, big ones that you see on the side of the road that may have kind of an orange building to them. I won't mention the brand name. They do not do any labor whatsoever. Um, they only sell the kits. Um, so okay. something to think about there. You so know, ask questions, you ask a lot of questions because you're going to run to the same things that, that you run into when you're building a home in a rural out in the middle of nowhere area. Same thing. If trying to get someone to go out there to erect the building. Go, yeah is 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 something to consider so okay good to know um carolyn is asking do you have to have the post in the middle of the back porch carolyn you don't No, we could do a, an engineered beam um, across the top of there we can get you a price on on doing that we just need to put a piece of engineered wood product up in the attic to support the weight of the roof okay perfect um rachel is asking what is the time frame to build she's signing a contract next week all right, so it varies based on where you're building, Rachel. But what we're telling folks right now is to brace for 14 to 16 months from the time that you do the deposit. And by the way, there's not stuff happening every day. That's why it's 14 to 16 months. There's yes. a lot of sitting and waiting on things, on people, uh, and not just the counties. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're we're finding a lot of sitting and waiting on, yeah, county building permits, county septic permits, uh, culvert approvals and designs. Um, soil testing, things like, like everybody, the whole world is shorthanded. Mm-hmm. The whole world is short staffed. Um, and so, you know, we're waiting longer than we've ever had, even on vendors and engineers we've been using for a long, 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 long time. Um, they don't have as many soil testing crews or trucks that they didn't get. And guess what? They can't go buy more trucks because guess what? Right. It's not out there. There's not trucks <laughs> that they can go buy. Yeah. And even if there was trucks, they could go buy the company that they pay to outfit them with the drilling rigs is backed up right now. So, um, the, the, the wait time is not just, it's taking longer to shoot each nail in. That's not what's taking longer. Right. What's taking longer is we're waiting on every mm-hmm. part of the process. Yes, absolutely. All right. Um, Brandy is saying she was excited to see some of the same changes uh, she made to her San Jacinto and Gillespie County. So awesome. Brandy, thanks for watching. Um, David, same beautiful home. Mrs. Alfaro, very cool to see so many customizations. It was like I was in a San Jacinto, but not in a San Jacinto at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. And even, David, you weren't in a San Jacinto with me, which made it even better. Probably. Even better. <laughs> uh, Wesley's saying, knock on wood, so there's more great weather. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I did. I think, I don't know if you noticed, I did as soon as he said that. Well, he is the one in charge. So yes. <laughs> um, Janet is asking, what are your thoughts on metal roofs? Uh, mm-hmm. What is the approximate square foot cost extra? And does Tilson do that or another contractor? All right, Janet. Great question. My thoughts on metal roof is they are expensive. That is my thought. Um, they, they won't last you any longer than a shingle mm-hmm. roof. I don't, I don't care what you hear. I don't care what you read. I don't care what the advertisement says. There is no such thing as a, they don't do lifetime warranties on the roofs. Um, they get damaged in hailstorms just like a shingle roof does. Um, so they are purely cosmetic. I think they are beautiful. I mm-hmm. think they're very pretty. Uh, we have them on some of our design centers. We put them on many customers' homes. They perform very, very well as long as they are concealed fastener. They're the, um, we don't do, I don't, I would not touch an exposed fastener metal roof. I don't think that's a good idea at all. Um, so conceal fastener, um, roof, and they are significantly more expensive. I mean, you could be talking as much as 40 to $60,000 more than a shingle roof. Um, and again, they, they can get damaged just like a shingle roof can. They are not any more energy efficient, but they are very pretty. Mm-hmm. Um, so if, if, it, if it's something that you just have to have and it, it completes the look of your forever home, I get it. Like, do it. Um, we have plenty of customers that do, and they're very happy. We do have um, 
contractors that we use. Uh, we have that is one of the situations that if if you have someone that you want to use, you're welcome to go that route too. But I can tell you, steel is up like fifty something percent in the last four months. Mm -hmm. So it's they, if you get a price like right now, for instance, we won't we won't quote you a price on the metal roof until right about fifteen to thirty days before we're going to release the file to construction because the building, the metal roofing company is not going to honor the price. That's how quickly right. it's changing. Yeah. Um, and so anyone who gives you a bid today. It's worth the papers written. I got a I got a bid just recently to do like just a equipment shed, like just just metal for an equipment shed to put like farm equipment, like box blades and pallet forks and stuff like that. They emailed me the price, the price for just the stuff. Is it, this price is good for 14 days. Oh wow. 14 days. That's it. If I don't make a decision or even put the deposit down in 14 days, it's all it's all over with. So um, and by the way, lumber is up 58% in the last 30 days. Lumber is up 58% in the last 30 days. And what is supposed oh, to be the slow time of building, okay? Yeah. This is not going to be the slow time of building, folks. There's, there is no slow time yeah. of building right now. Mm -mm. That's not Next good. question. Next question. <laughs> um, question. How far in East Texas do we build? Well, Texas bad boy 51. Uh, we do not go quite all the way to the Louisiana border. Um, so it depends on, because we go kind of north too. So I don't know what you're considering East Texas. Tell us what county you're thinking about. I'll tell you if we do. We do Lufkin, like the Angelina County area, uh, of course, Tyler, um, all those areas. And then obviously we do where these folks are, Liberty County. We will do um, Hardin County. Um, and I we'll actually dabble into, into Jefferson County um, towards the, the Beaumont area. We've got a, a trade base out of there. But as you get to the north, far northeast Texas, we don't go like Marshall, Jefferson. Um, obviously, we're not doing uh, Texarkana, um, those, uh, Atlanta. We're not doing those parts of Texas. Okay. All right. And that Perfect. was, oh, I was about to say, yeah, he asked, uh, Wesley was asking Texarkana. So no. Yeah. Afraid not. Afraid not. And then Louis is asking, do y'all know how much more is an arched door? We, I don't offhand, Lewis. I'm really sorry. I don't uh, have, I'm going to you mean for an entry door. I don't have the pricing for that, but I do know that we do have access to get those. So. Okay. Uh, Texas Bad Boy is asking about Camp County. Camp County. I don't think we do. We used to, but it, it, I don't think we do it anymore. Um, I have it right yeah, here. No. Yeah, not currently. I'm really not sorry. Currently. We can, can't service Camp County. We just don't have the trade base out there right now. All right. And then Robert is sharing. He just finished his stakeout appointment. Roll it right along. Awesome. awesome. That's great. All right, Robert. Thanks for sharing. And thank all of you for doing this. Um, Rachel, thank you so much for sharing this with us. I really, mm -hmm. really appreciate it for you opening your home to us. Uh, first for choosing us and letting us build your home and then yes, around opening up to us, let us share it. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, Kelsey and Jerry, thank you all for going out there and doing that. David for videoing it. Dawn for putting all this together. Thank each and every one of you who watch and comment. Um, you make all of us a lot better. Uh, you've made this year great. This is the last one for mm -hmm. Christmas, right? We're, okay. So yes, this is our last one for Christmas. Yeah, this is our last live before Christmas. Uh, Dawn's going on vacation and I'm not allowed out of my kennel when Dawn's not here. Um, <laughs> smart. Uh, so anyway, no, th thank you all so much for, for watching and, and having this little community with us. We genuinely hope we've answered your questions, made this um, experience a little bit easier for you. The whole point of these is just to remove friction um, from this process because we know it can be a very, very um, tedious and very uh, overwhelming kind of thing. So just, mm -hmm. you know, we know that and we recognize that and we're here to help it and make it a little bit better for you. That's really what we want. Um, so Anyway, Merry Christmas to all. We hope you Merry have a Christmas. great Merry Christmas uh, with you and your family. And we hope to see you guys on the other side of 2022. And uh, yeah, hope to make you part of the Tilson family real soon. Thank you all. Bye, everybody.